Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. And as you guys can tell from the way I am relaxed and from the title above, this is going to be another reading vlog. I think this is my third reading vlog on the channel. I'm not sure. I think this is my third one, though. Um, and we're going to be discussing this final book that I have to read from Tessa Abshar, like, the last book. I have read six of her seven books. This is the seventh book that I have to read, and I've been stalling on reading this book for the longest, but this one is called Land of Silence by Tessa Afshar. Stunning cover. Um, I have started this book so many times and stopped, and then I started reading it earlier this month. Gave up because the first two chapters crushed my soul. Like, they crushed me. They crushed me. And I decided to do a reading vlog just because, one, Tessa Afshar is literally my favorite, um, biblical fiction author um i love her biblical fiction she is a different type of biblical fiction author she more so writes about the actual biblical stories whereas other biblical fiction authors they create um stories around the biblical people if that makes sense so this one is her kind of i don't want to say retelling but it's her creating the story of the woman with the issue of blood and i don't believe that woman ever had a name i'll actually put exactly what chapter in the which um book in the bible it's from um the woman with the issue of blood but this is her kind of story if you will it is fictional so keep that in mind but um yeah it's called land of silence and i love tessa so i figured after the first two chapters like crushed my soul why not make a reading vlog for this because this is literally the seventh and last book that i have to read before her newest release which is going to be daughter of rome and i'll put that cover here daughter of rome is such a stunning cover it's by far my favorite cover from her ever of all of her books that she has out literally my favorite um but right now we're going to be reading land of silence and um Okay, let me just read the back. So, it says, Before Christ called her daughter, before she stole healing by touching the hem of his garment, Eliana is a young girl crushed by guilt. After her only brother is killed while in her care, Eliana tries to earn forgiveness by working for her father's textile trade and caring for her family. When another tragedy places Eliana in sole charge of the business, her talent for design brings enormous success, but never the absolution she longs for. As her world unravels, she breaks her betrothal to the only man she will ever love. Then illness strikes, isolating Eliana from everyone, stripping everything she has left. No physician can cure her. No end is in sight until she hears a, until she hears whispers of a man whose mere touch can heal. After so many years of suffering and disappointment, is it possible that one man could redeem the wounds of body, heart, and soul? <sighs> so, I've already started this book. If you follow me on Instagram, you heard me rave about it and rant about it. My sister Stephanie knows my feelings on this book. <sighs> Anyways, so, read the first two chapters, and I'm just going to briefly let you guys know my thoughts, and then we're going to go into me reading chapter three. Um, so, the goal for today is to read up to chapter 11, which is page 126. So, I'm going to read all the way from page 25 to 126, so that's about 100 pages. Um, but I have tabbed it up, as you guys can see. I already have it marked up for my three days worth of reading. Let's start with chapter 1. My thoughts. And if you guys don't know, my reading vlogs are very much spoilery, so I do talk about what's going on in the book. Um, I know I'm slacking on my actual book reviews. I'm going to have book reviews coming in September. Um, so yeah, you probably won't see this video until September anyway, but by September, the, the second week, the second Saturday of September, I should have book reviews being rolled out for you guys that are not spoilery if you guys are interested. But this one is a spoilery review. So, if you don't want to know what's going on in the book, don't watch this video. Just, just, just don't watch it until after you read the book. Or if you do, then it doesn't matter. Like, I don't mind spoilery books because, spoilery videos about books because they make me interested. So, chapter one. Ugh. Oh, chapter one. Chapter one. Just, it crushed my soul. I need a little bit of sip of my coffee. Excuse me. And I'm in my robe. I'm relaxed. My son just left to go to his father's house till the weekend. So, yeah. I don't gotta tell you what this guy's in what this is do i it's my white chocolate mocha iced of course with um a hint of vanilla syrup a hint of lavender syrup as well as the international delights um sweet cream creamer from cold stone no sugar this time though did i put sugar actually i actually did put five packs of sugar in this so delicious but um okay anyways oh before i get into this book i wanted to share with you guys this book that i believe 
I'm waiting for my uncle to actually respond to me, but my uncle did tell me that he was going to send me a book that would be useful for me. As you guys, if some of you probably don't know, but um, you probably would have seen the ordination videos. But I was ordained as an evangelist, and um, I have a video coming with my final thoughts on it. I did receive my cross, my um, certificate. I received the Bible, but the Bible, my first lady has it because she's signing it. My pastor signed it, as well as the other pastor signed it. So I'm going to have that video coming soon. But if I'm not mistaken, my uncle sent me this book. I'm, I'm just, like I said, waiting for him to tell me if he did, but I believe he sent me this book. And it's Hooper's Evangelist and Minister's Handbook, Everything You Need to Know Before You Go by Deborah C. Hooper. And, um, oh my god, I got, literally got this yesterday. Okay, so I'm talking about yesterday and today and all that. You guys don't know what today is. So today is Wednesday, the um, 20th of August. So I got this um, Tuesday, the 27th of August. And I already read chapter one, and oh my god. This book... I have marked it up, you guys can see. It's literally all about being an evangelist and a minister um, within ministry and even outside of ministry. And there's so much insight in this book. Like, I'm loving it. This, like, this page is nothing but, like, scriptures. So she literally wrote out every scripture reference that she speaks of. I'm on chapter two, and it, I mean, it goes into depth about the different types of evangelists that there are, um, traveling as an evangelist armor bearers and music ministry health issues um your wardrobe and um the groundwork and things like that public speaking preached word what type of books you should have in your personal library um the business side of being an evangelist such as your business cards and things like that your biography so yes oh my god this is so it is really good and um I'm excited for this. I think, if I'm not mistaken, like I said, this is the book that he sent me, but I'm waiting for him to respond, and if not, someone sent me this book, but I believe it was my aunt and my uncle, and um, it's it's really good, really amazing that I have this. Um, it is for evangelists, but it's also for ministers, because an evangelist is also a minister. Every minister is not an evangelist, but every evangelist is a minister, if that makes sense. I'm going to do a whole video on um, the whole being an evangelist and stuff like that, because a lot of you guys have asked me. Um, what does me being ordained entail and what an evangelist is. So I'm going to do a whole video on that. But I have this book and I love it so much after reading chapter one. But anyways, so this book here. I started August 2nd or August 1st or something like that. Then I stopped because I needed to make a reading vlog because of my feelings. So chapter one. Chapter one starts off just... I don't even know where it is. It starts off so sad. Okay, so... We have Eliana and her little brother, and they are 12 years um, apart. So her little brother is four, and she would obviously be 16. They're 12 years apart. So she is in charge of watching her brother. Now, keep in mind, she doesn't. she's not one of those like 16-year-olds that will actually pay attention to their brothers. Her mother knew that she wasn't very... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Her mother knew that she wouldn't really pay attention to the brother. So, just keep that in mind, okay? Alright. So, four-year-old running around having fun. They outside with the little plants and little animals and the insects, right? Insects! Okay, so, there is a scene on page five. Um, um, it, it, makes me, it makes me want to be mad. Like, I want to cry and be mad at the same time. But... So, there's a scene where um, her little brother is playing, and Eliana puts a flower up to his face, because they're playing, and um, she gets distracted by a freaking sheep, you guys. If I'm not mistaken, it was a stupid sheep. Yes, it was a sheep. A sheep. First of all, I had to calm myself when I first read this and think about it. Like, back in the day, they didn't have playgrounds. They didn't have, like, how we have. They had animals that they had to play with. That that was their playground. Animals and grass, you know? So, her little brother is screaming, saying, go away, go away. And he's flapping his arms around in a circle, right? Mind you, she just shoved a flower in his face, okay? So, her attention is not even on her brother. It literally says, the sheep had my attention, though, and I ignored Joseph's cry. So, that right there was number one. That's actually number two. Number one is your brother screaming, go away, go away. I know for me, if my, my siblings are outside screaming, go away, go away, I'm not, I don't care what got my attention, I'm going to immediately put my attention on my siblings. So that's strike number one. Strike number two is you said a sheep. A sheep. A ba. A, a sheep, you guys. A sheep stole her attention and she ignored her brother. 
So then further down on the book, we read that um, it's a bee. But it's not just a bee to her brother because her brother got stung by a bee, I think, when he was three years old. And he broke out in hives. His entire leg had swelled up and um, the size of a tree trunk. And he had a lot of pain. So, that's strike three. One, you ignore your brother screaming. Two, a stupid sheep caught your attention. And then three, you find out that it's a bee, and a bee stung your brother a year ago and caused him a lot of pain and a lot of swelling. So he's basically allergic to bees. Come on now. Just, come on. That, okay. So then, um, apparently, her brother gets stung in the temple by the bee. And he starts wheezing and saying that it hurts, and he starts breaking out, and in the end, he dies. That whole thing just made me sad, because it's like, yo, I don't know who to be mad when, and then, you know, her father was, like, upset, um, and he was, her father was real rude, like, granted, Okay, so the, her father said this wouldn't wouldn't have happened if you had watched him better because she's the older, she has a younger sister, and then her brother, who's four years old, was the only boy. So I get that her father was upset and angry because like that was like your sole heir to take everything. I understand, but at the same time, the mother knew that she wasn't really capable of watching the brother. It, she even mentioned it. If I can find that, I don't even know if I marked it. Yeah, she said, I was 12 years older than Joseph and more than capable of caring for him. My mother is suspicious of my passion for my father's trade and looking for ways to distract me from my fascination had given me charge over Joseph for the afternoon. Her plan worked to double advantage. It got my exuberant brother out from under the busy feet of the adults and um, it least, least it fed my obsession with the secrets of the trade. So basically, her mother was using... Joseph, the son, um, as a scapegoat, not a scapegoat, is that the word I'm looking for? Kind of like a way to keep both the children occupied, which is wrong on all accounts. You should never do that, like, ever, especially if you know that your child is interested in something else. Like, I would never tell my son to watch something if I know that his interest is on something else. It, it, it just doesn't logically make sense to me. Just saying. But, um, her father was really, really mean, and, you know, she started to builds up a lot of guilt and hurt with herself um and then her father tells her to get out of my sight somebody's calling me i don't know who this is calling me so give me one second guys scammers um quickly hung that up but yeah so it was really sad um and then there was a part where she talked about her name so eliana is her name i'll put it on the screen but um basically eli which is my god and then Anna, which means favor. So her father named her, my God has favored me, um, Eliana. I say Eliana because it sounds like it makes sense. But Eliana, that was the name of her meeting. And I said, oh my God, that is such a cute name. Like I literally wrote OMG because it's like such a really cute name. Um, but then she's like, she's like, until I caused his death, I felt as though I had destroyed the greatest treasure the earth had to offer. Death had swallowed me up along with Joseph. Um, and taking him, it took me to, and that right there is the beginning of her starting to beat herself up, and that is a terrible thing. Um, I felt, well, I, I've never killed anybody, but there were situations where I felt like it was my fault, and um, I could relate to her on that kind of level where, like, you do something wrong, and it's something terrible that it affects many people, and you harbor that hurt, you harbor that pain, and it just was like, oh, rip my soul out. But I love Ethan, who was her betrothed, and he is such a cutie pie. I like it. Anyway, on chapter two, um, we get more of Ethan consoling her, um, and then she's like, her parents hate her, and she doesn't want, um, Ethan said he didn't want her to be alone, but she said, it's the only relief I can offer my father. He will hurt more if I'm there, which just, uh, it broke me. Then it talks about the whole um, thing with her meeting Ethan and things like that, so that's cool. But, uh, there was a, the, okay, the end of this, the end of this with the stupid Pharisees and the Sadducees pissed me off. Because at the end, 
I'm going to read what the Pharisee says. So the Pharisees waved his hand. The boy, nothing. The sister now, she is another matter. She is at fault for her own brother's death. How is God to forgive such a sin? It would be better for her if she had not been born. The resurrection of the dead is not good news for such a one. I tell you. I, it's just like, what? You're condemning her for the death of her brother? And if you guys know all about the Pharisees, you understand the Pharisees are more religious they're, they're false religious people, you know. Um, they portray to live by the word, but don't really live by the word. If that, you, I hope you get what I'm saying. But um, that pissed me off. Um, and then he said, how hard is it to swipe away a bee or kill it? Her negligence in caring for that poor child is clear. Believe me, my friend, when I tell you her punishment is coming. Then there is a guy named Gamio. And what is Gamio? Gamiel is a part of the Sanhedrin. So, um, Gamiel says, Nonsense. You are turning the law into an executioner's axe instead of a signpost that leads the way to salvation. My God. When Gamiel said that, I was, I'm probably saying his name wrong. Gam Gamaliel? I don't know. It'll be on the screen. That name. But <laughs> when he said that, I was just like, Oh my God. Like, you could already tell this is going to be an emotional read because there's just so much being thrown and being said. And this is like, real life like you have people who are christians out there condemning people when they really should be leading them to salvation leading them to christ showing them the light and not just keeping them in the darkness and this pharisees was really just keeping her in the darkness and i think that's going to have a lot of effect on her with the whole being um sick and the death and, and stuff like that because he's literally just like she's gonna get what she deserves i'm just like yo oh here we go then is a J Johannan, the Sadducee leaned over, still think the resurrection of the dead is a comfort to the grieving. We Sadducees may give no false peace to the people, but at least we don't tear their hearts out with our good intentions either. I mean, you got the Sanhedrin, you got the Sadducees, you got the Pharisees. I mean, there's even a rabbi that's at the funeral, and it's just like, yo, it blew my mind. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read chapters 3 to 10. You guys are going to watch me read. This part is going to be sped up. I might, you'll see my facial expressions. If you've ever seen a, a reading vlog from me, you guys know how this works. Um, I read, I pause a little bit, talk about it if I feel like it, and you get my thoughts. So hopefully this reading vlog is not an hour long. We're going to try to keep this reading vlog under 45 minutes. Probably not. We'll see. So I'm going to get to reading. So let's go. <laughs>
can't stand these Pharisees. I they make me mad. So I am on chapter is it six or seven? Six? Chapter six, chapter six. Yes, I'm in chapter six. And um this is like the part where we are introduced to um I can't pronounce his name, it'll be on the screen, but it starts with a V. Um and Ethan and, and whatnot, their story uh of how Ethan saved him. But we are at the part I'm at the part now, sorry, where um Eliana's kind of stuck with the decision of making blankets and things like that, and she needs to come up with an idea. Her sister said um, that she should probably embroider them like she did with the towels, but blankets are a little harder, she says. So she started off by saying, Lord, but then she stopped because she says she hasn't prayed since her brother's death. She ties, but she doesn't pray. Sorry, guys, I'm getting a text <laughs> um, from my first lady's daughter. I'm going to respond back to her in a second. But, um, so she says she ties, but she doesn't pray. And I kind of, like, smacked me in the face. Because a lot of the times there's, there's a lot of people out there who will pay their tithes, who will do what they need to do um, to put on airs, but they don't pray. And prayer is highly essential to everything that we do for God. Um, and then she goes into this, like, long-winded paragraph about how the Pharisees taught that righteousness depended on the perfect pursuit of the law and that if you didn't perform your duties that God um, if you performed your duties then God would bless you but if you failed he would remove his hand of care and protection from you and how faith revolved around a simple legal transaction and that um, you could not be right with God if you did not fulfill your end of that transaction and it's just like <sighs> I want to punch that Pharisees in the face I literally just wrote lies like lies lies it's, it's like why would God remove his hand of protection over you because you didn't perform well? Like, it doesn't make sense. But it's honestly what they thought back then, how the Pharisees and them thought they were very religious and things like that. And it just pisses me off. It pisses me off that she thinks this way. And I'm just like, I'm heartbroken because I know something bad is getting ready to happen. And I'm just like, please don't happen right now. Like, just nothing happened at... Up, like let me get through chapter 6 through 10 without any sadness happening because right now I'm loving Ethan Ethan is so amazing I love the things that he does for Eliana um her father needs to get it together like you, you you've had your time to mourn it's gonna hurt it's gonna you know you're gonna mourn for life but come on now he's irritating me but I'm gonna get back to this book I'm gonna come back when I'm done with chapter 10, if I don't have any more thoughts to say in between, and, um, yeah. Okay, guys, so I finished, um, chapters 3 to 10. So I finished that first half of my reading. All of my tabs. Lots of blue tabs. Lots and lots of blue tabs. Very sad. Um, right now, being one-third of the way through with this book, I don't think it's gonna replace Pearl in the Sand, just because Pearl in the Sand really, um, resonates with me and my personal experiences in life however this is so tragic like the thing that she had just dealt with in chapters um i think it was eight and nine or was it just chapter nine um with those thieves just like oh my gosh and um i love ethan ethan he is phenomenal i love his um the care and protection he has for elena I love how positive he is, I love how hardworking he is, how um, optimistic he is, how loving he is, how um, caring, did I say that, caring, um, he's just such a worthy man, like he is phenomenal as a man, as a, um, a, a betrothed, like I can see him really loving her as his wife, and um, you know, there was a scene where she was like, um, I don't even know if I know where it is can't even find it because I didn't mark it oh um she said uh, a silent wife is a gift of the Lord and he said if I wanted a silent wife I would not have looked to the daughter of Benjamin of Jerusalem I'm actually gonna mark that right now but like it's just his love for her how much he's willing to wait and the effort and stuff that he's putting into being with her is phenomenal because most people would not would not do it at all um, I'm going to quickly just mark this up because I didn't mark it. But um, I love him. And his reaction to everything with her almost being raped was insane. Like, I loved it. Um, I loved his view of her father. How um, it's not that her father is ashamed of her, but her father is ashamed of himself. And he doesn't know how to express that. So, that view was amazing. 
so far i'm loving it um definitely gonna be a five star read off the bat i don't care um unless something crazy happens that knocks it to a four but this is definitely probably gonna be another five star read um but as of right now being 126 pages and it is not topping pearl in the sand for me um it's just not pearl in the sand will always be number one from tessa for me um but again i'm only one third of the way through it so i still have two thirds left to go to see but as of right now this is leading towards a five star it's really more of a 4.5 but i know by the end of this this is gonna get a five so out of seven books from tessa i can boldly say that i have given six of her books a five star rating and one a four star and the one that i gave four star to was um thief of corinth I'm going to reread that book. Um, I don't like Paul's character in that book for some reason. I don't even think it was Paul. I think it was Ardenae. Um, Ardenae and her brother were amazing. I, like, I love them. All three of them. Ardenae, her brother, and the other dude that I believe was her brother or something like that. I don't really remember. But the third dude. Um, they're cool and all. But I don't know. There was something about Paul that I didn't care for in that book. I did love Paul in the other books. Um, which is... a. Uh, mm, bread of angel that's the other book he was in i love paul and bread of angels um i'm not i don't think he makes an appearance in this one because this one is about the time of jesus so he doesn't make an appearance in that but i loved paul in um bread of angels i liked what he said in thief of corinth but i didn't per se like his character development in thief of corinth but um yeah so that's pretty much it right now it is what time is it it's 2 16 216 right now Wednesday 20 August 28th um I'm most likely gonna come back tonight and probably read the next third of this book so I'm gonna come back and read the next third of this book or like a few chapters from that um because it's so good I could definitely binge read it right now but there are some things I need to do like my devotional didn't do that this morning again late on that um I have to send out some emails um for church administration work and things like that I need to get get going with my planners for the week um so yeah and i have major books to haul major books to haul Ma major major books to haul but yeah so i'm gonna end here for now and if i come back later on you guys will know because you'll see the time stamp or the date stamp in the corner but yeah right now i'm gonna go schedule my vlogs for tomorrow which you would have already seen but thursday friday and saturday i have three vlogs going up the ordination week prior to ordination day and then the actual service who is this texting my phone is this my sis you have like a lot of emails and texts and stuff to answer so i'm gonna go handle that right now and get my devotional going hey guys so what's today today is august 29th it's thursday so it is day two of my reading vlog and um I'm going to just tell you guys now, yesterday I did read some more pages. So I read up to chapter 11, I think, read chapter 10, and then I finished up to page 186, I think, something like that. But right now I'm on chapter 20, yes, I'm on chapter 20, and my thoughts so far. So, right now, okay, let me just say I love me some Ethan. Ethan is amazing. He is such, I, I've said this before, he is such a phenomenal guy. He is phenomenal like i love him to pieces he's amazing um that's i uh, really much all i can say about that um as far as this roman soldier clevius Cl i don't even know what the heck his name what, what's his name what's this this douchebag douchebag's name i don't even i'm, I'm calling him a douchebag because that's what he decimus calvis whatever his name is i'll put it on the screen i can't stand him oh my god I felt like something was wrong back when she caught him getting a lot of things and then he told her that her father gave it to him and he would he would buy the items from her father and then sell it at a higher price to his Roman friends and whatnot. So I knew something was off with that and then when he kept trying to want to help her with the finances and the books, I knew something was off. Um, and then you have this fire. I feel like he started this fire. I don't care what nobody says. He started it. The situation with her dad and the horse. I don't think anybody was trying to kill him. I think he purposely did that to her father, to kill her father. Just saying. Um, and then <laughs> this, the scene that broke my heart was when he literally was trying to rape her and was like, oh, let me just get a kiss and um, said that I'll, he'll do something to her family so she stopped fighting. And then you had Ethan walk in. Oh, my God. Like, and then she was like, no, Ethan, I didn't struggle. I wanted him. Like, yo, are you for real, shorty? Like... I feel like she's just taking too much on. And there was actually something that she said, if I could find it. 
Um, she said, better to grow my pile of lies than risk the lies of those most precious to me. She's taking on too much of the burden. She's taking on too much of the guilt and the shame. And it's starting to irritate me because um, she shouldn't be doing that. Especially to, like, Ethan. He's really trying to help her. Let me bring this out some. He's trying to help her. And it's just like, why are you doing certain things? And I don't... It's breaking my heart. It's breaking my heart. My coffee getting a little cold, but... I just... I don't know. I like Master Gamiel. Gamiel, I don't know. He's a scribe. No, he's not a scribe. He is something, but he gave her um, some scriptures. And um, she's starting to go through the Psalms as well as Isaiah and Ezekiel. And I'm loving the scriptures that she's reading. And what I really did love the most was um, she said um, on page 230, this was the end of chapter 19. I'm going to read it. She says, now as I read the scriptures that Gamiel, I'm probably saying his wrong name his name wrong but whatever Gamia had brought me I began to realize that there was more to God than an angry judge I could not fully accept that his love extended to me but I began to hunger for more of him I came to realize that the God I found in the scriptures might be my only source of comfort I read his word um yeah I read his word and clung to that spark of promise and um I just I love that she's starting to have a passion to know more about God um and then there was a question that uh she was speaking to claudius claudia and titus and i i think i'm not sure if titus is the you know the person that was paul's writing to in titus one i'm sorry not titus one but in titus i don't know if that's the titus but i'm gonna assume like in my mind that's what i think of <laughs> um but she said who knows the mind of god and i'm just like that is so true nobody knows the mind of god his he, like god is just oh He's mind-blowing. Like, he blows minds. Like, you will never know the mind of God. No matter how hard you try to understand, no matter how hard you try to... You just never would. Um, and it just, it blows my mind. So, I'm, right now, I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, she's going through the scriptures right now. She's talking about um, Isaiah and the prophecy that he spoke. About how he said, I am the Lord and there is no other besides me. There is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me. So, I'm really just... I'm reading through this and I'm just like, wow. And, and the scriptures that Tessa chose, phenomenal. Now, I have marked up the scriptures with, like, a purple tab. I need, I'm actually going to go back once I'm done reading and actually plug in, like, what scripture she's referring to. I know that they come from the Psalms. Um, they come from Song of Solomon. They come from um, Isaiah and Ezekiel because that's what um, Eliana is speaking of. But it's just... I love the way Tessa is, like, doing this. So I have three more chapters to go, and then I'll be done with the second portion and then i'll just have that portion left to go i'm thinking of finishing to finishing finishing it today um i'm her sister is finally married but i'm so sad because now um ethan has gotten engaged to sarai sarah sarai i think it's sarai let me just go back a page yes yeah, sarai and um it's just like you broke ethan's heart for no reason now i love that guy what is his name oh my god Virato, Vir Vir I don't know, I'm, I'll put his name on the screen, but I love him, the one that Ethan had saved back a few chapters, I love him, he is so funny, like, ugh. I just, I love his heart, and just how amazing he is as a man, and his, like, friendship and stuff, he's phenomenal, um, I'm gonna read the last few pages of, um, the last few chapters, the last few chapters that I have to read, and then I'll be done, and, um, right now, like I said, it's a five-star read for me, it's not gonna, it, it doesn't trump Pearl in the Sand for me, it just doesn't, I am loving Eliana, though, I'm loving her, because of the depth of her character. And I know that when we get to the portion where she meets Jesus and touches the hem of his garment, I know that it's going to be like a powerful punch. But for me, she's just not topping Rahab right now. She's not. Rahab has my heart. Pearl in the sand has my heart. But um, I do feel bad for her. I feel so sad. I feel terrible, terribly sad for her. And it's breaking my heart to see her just piling on these lies and this sorrow and this hurt and this pain. But I'm also loving her on like getting into the scriptures and even when Gamiel gave her the scriptures let me go back um i'm looking for i think it's in chapter 19 when he gave her the scripture yeah when he gave her the scripture he was like i think in this case um no she said um no, okay, I'm going to go back a bit. So he said, I bought something for your father, but perhaps you can use it more. Various readings from the law and the prophets. Um, I had thought it might cheer and guide him in his sickness, but I suspect he is well past that. I pray the words in these pages will 
pages shall bring you comfort. Then she says, you are giving the scriptures to a woman. Then he says, I think in this case, God would not disapprove. So I just thought that was so sweet that um, even though he's, I can't, I don't remember if he's a rabbi or not, or if he's a Sadducee, he's something in that triangular, you guys get what I'm saying. He's something, but um, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to read the last three chapters and um, last two chapters and come back to you guys with my thoughts. And then I may finish reading tonight. I don't know. We'll see because it's literally just like 100 pages left to go. Is it? What page is that? 165. It's like 100 and something pages left to go. So I may finish. We'll see. I'm going to get back to reading this book. Okay, guys. So I read up to chapter 22. So now I only have chapters 23 to what chapter is this i don't know it says epilogue we need to figure out what chapter that is to 32 so i have 23 to 32 to go and um oh my god so we're at the part now with her having the issue of blood um it's been a year and she's been going to all of these different types of people to get healed. Nobody knows the situation. We all have heard the story of the woman with the issue of blood. But the issue of blood, I will put the scripture on the screen so you guys can check that out. But um, yeah, so we're reading that. And um, pretty much she had her menstrual. It last, it came early. It went away. Um, and then it had came back. And then it lasted for a few months. Um, went away for four days and then came back. So she has this incessant... Um, menstrual period that she can't figure out and back then when a woman was menstruating she was considered unclean which i think is hilarious to this day um to think of having your period as unclean because you having your period is your body cleaning itself out but yeah um she was considered unclean and then um we have uh, there, the dude I said that I like that Ethan bought. I'm gonna call him V for short because I can't pronounce his name. But he came through and he had me laughing because she was like, "No, you can't hug me, you can't touch me, you can't sit there. It's unclean." And he's just like, "Well, excellent. Since we're both unclean, let us go all the way and eat whatever we wish. We can repent later." So he has like this humorous side to him that I'm loving. I feel like he's gonna convert to the faith, um, just because of how he uh, addressed her with the whole. Uh, what did he say? the blessings of the lord to you mistress and she said the lord is it now why didn't you tell me you were coming so um i'm loving it i love that he still keeps in contact with her um i need ethan though i need i need more ethan i just i tessa definitely has a way of making couples like break up or like take this long hiatus from each other and then coming back together even if they decide to end up marrying somebody else they always come back together because of something tragic or something so i'm interested to see how she's going to bring back um ethan and eliana i did cheat a bit i'm just i did definitely cheat a bit and went to the back <laughs> um and if i'm not mistaken they were together oh see the woman with the issue of the okay so that's matthew 9 verses 20 to 22 mark 5 verses 25 to 34 and then luke chapter 8 verses 43 to 48 so those are the three gospels that she is mentioned in and if i'm not mistaken like i said uh she did did she marry him Yes, I believe she did end up marrying I'm trying not to, trying so hard not to read like to read the back, but I think she did end up marrying him. But I'm interested to see them two come back together. So this is all I have left of the book and oh this might just be a two day vlog. I might literally finish this book tonight. Um it's one fifty eight right now, so two o'clock. Um I'm literally editing I just posted up my um ordination blog week video and I'm currently editing the other two vlogs that'll be posted up on Friday and Saturday. Um, I am going to make a video today on um, me doing my Sunday school work. Um, so yeah, I have that video coming. That video will probably be up next week though. But um, so far, I like I said, I'm loving it. I only have like 100 or so pages left to go. Definitely a 5 star read for me. Definitely enjoying this, but it does not replace Pearl in the Sand for me. I think if I would have read this before Pearl in the Sand, it might have taken the first place for me. But... I don't know. Um, I've heard a lot of you guys love this book. Uh, but for me, it's definitely second place. Mm, is it second place or is it third place? Because right now we have Pearl in the Sand. It's a tie between um, Bread of Angels and Harvest of Gold. I'm sorry, Harvest of Rubies right now for like second, third place. So this might be like my fourth favorite from Tessa. Um, 
Mm, yeah, I don't know. I do like that she included Lydia in this book, though. That I thought that was awesome that she included Lydia. I don't know if I can find it, but I did mark it up. Um, but she talked about Lydia from Bread of Angels in this book, which was awesome. And yes, Titus and Claudia are the two that are mentioned, like I mentioned. And they are, I believe, the people that Paul were writing to um, with the letter to Titus. Um, because they were pagans. Pagans. Pa pa yeah, I think that's the right word in my mind. But um, they believed in, like venus and jupiter and all of that so if i'm not mistaken that's dumb if i'm wrong i'll put it on the screen that i'm wrong but um if i'm not mistaken that's who titus is from this so i like that she's able to bring other biblical people into this um you're not seeing paul but you get to see titus you get to hear about um isaiah and ezekiel and david and i believe she talks about king cyrus as well so i i love it and i love that she included lydia because lydia was from bread of angels so when i've heard that i was like oh my god bread of angels um because she mentioned lydia and her father by name which was so awesome but i want to know who this mystery person is that ezer i think it's Ezer or ethan's father he found somebody to buy um elena's father's business because her father did die and i felt that was really sad her father died he did die um and her mother is sick and she's dealing with the issue with the blood and her sister's pregnant but people are treating her like an outcast because she's consistently having her menstrual cycle and it's considered unclean and it's just like oh it's irritating but there's a mystery person that has purchased um her father's business i'm curious to know if it's ethan or if it's decimus clavis whatever the stupid dude that's been making her life hell i'm curious to know which one it is like curious really curious um to know who it is um but i'm loving b he's awesome and i'm just i'm excited for the end of this book to come <sighs> just all i have left you guys is all oh my God. so i'm gonna chill out for now i might come back at like eight o'clock eat some ice cream read the rest of this book but so far, I'm loving it. Um, this reading vlog is very different from like my other reading vlogs. But I'm trying to keep this reading vlog shorter than my other reading vlogs. So, yeah. The silence is really good. I really do thank you guys that recommended me read this. This is my last one. And Tessa is not disappointing. Another five-star read. Like I said, I haven't finished it. But off the back, five-star read. You see all the tabs. Lots of blue tabs on this one versus my other ones. Lots of blue tabs. But um, it's really, really good. So... I'm excited to finish this, give you guys my final thoughts, and once I'm done, I like, I have to hold out until Daughter of Rome, and I'm like, until I want to wait that long. I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it. Just because, like, Tessa, Tessa, for me, Tessa and Connie Lynn are, like, my two favorite biblical fiction authors, and then for Christian fiction, it definitely is Morgan L. Bussey hand down, because her fantasy writing is amazing. Amazing. So it's just, like, all of my authors are coming out with their, like, their final book, well, not vinyl, because Tessa doesn't, like, write series. Um, but, like, Connie Lynn's last book of the Cities of Refuge comes out next year. Um, Morgan's last book in the uh, Ravenwood Saga comes out next year. So I'm just like, ah, my heart, I can't deal. But I do have a bunch of other books that you guys can see on my shelf to read. And I will go through and do a, um, like, walkthrough of my Christian fiction shelf. All of the books on that shelf are strictly Christian fiction. Then I have that top shelf over there, which is like Christian nonfiction, and then these two shelves with my Christian nonfiction as well. But I'm debating on what I want to read. I think I need to read Bathsheba from Angela Hunt, just so that I can finish that um, Dangerous Beauties series. I think that's what it's called. I think that's what the series is called, because I read the Delilah and I read Esther. Um, but I think I want to read Bathsheba and then... I'm debating on who I want to start reading. I want to read more of Misu Andrews. But then I also want to read Judas Iscariot from Tosca Lee. But then I also have some books from Lynn Austin. And then, oh, I have another review book that I actually do need to read that ASAP on Queen Sheba. So that might be the next book I read outside of Redeeming Love because we will be reading that for the next Daughter of Inquis book club for September. So by the time you're watching this, I should have already posted information about that on um, my Instagram as well as my Facebook group. Yeah, we're going to be reading Redeeming Love. We're going to be reading <laughs> we're going to be reading Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers, which is an hist is, is how can I it's historical biblical fiction I don't know if that made sense but it's historical fiction based off of the story of Hosea and Gomer but it's set in gold country California I think that's 1850s or something like that so yeah I'm excited to read that I read it previously um 
on my phone. So to actually have like a physical copy to reread with you guys is going to be awesome because that book is so tragic. Ah! So I think while we're reading that, I'm going to actually be studying Hosea for myself because I know I said I wanted to study Hosea and a lot of you guys are asking me about the next Bible study. I'm going to make a whole video on that because I don't know. Um, God has been working on me with certain things and some things are getting ready to take place that I need to actually focus on. Um, so Bible studies, I don't know. I know we definitely need to finish John by the end of 2019 because we got through John 1 through 5. So I think I'm going to focus on that and then do everything else new next year. So I have a whole video on my thoughts for the rest of the year and everything once I have that ordination vlog part four come out for you guys. But yeah, that's it for today. Um, or so for right now, Land of Silence is beautifully written and I'm loving it. And I just, I love Tessa. She's awesome. Tessa is awesome. If you don't follow Tessa, definitely follow her on Instagram. Um, read all of her books. I recommend every last one of her books. Thief of Corinth is not my favorite, but I enjoyed it. If that makes sense. And I'm going to have a video. Okay. I'm going to have blog reviews blog reviews book reviews coming like i said like i i started it and then i stopped i'm gonna have individual book reviews for all of her books um but then i'm gonna do like a whole overall book bookish video based on tessa and then i'm gonna have one based on connie but all of their books will have individual reviews so i'm not sure how i'm gonna start that if i'll start off with just individual book reviews or if i'll do that one big collision collision if i'll do that one big um combined video first and then do individual i don't know i don't know it's too many books but yeah that's it for now. Hey guys, so I just got home. It is 11.01 right now. And um, I just wanted to come on and end this reading vlog. I know it wasn't like my usual reading vlogs, but that's okay because it's kind of shorter. But um, I did finish reading Lane of Silence by Tessa Afshar. This was the last book that I needed to read. I have officially read all seven of her published books. And I patiently await Daughter of Rome to be released February 2020. But I've read it five star read i haven't marked it as read yet on goodreads which i probably should do like in the next few minutes but this definitely has not replaced pearl in the sand pearl in the sand is still number one for me i feel like if i would have read this prior to pearl in the sand it definitely could have been number one but pearl in the sand just has a lot more meaning for me um and just what it means, um, especially how Tessa Afshar explained Pearl in the Sand title in the book. Now, she definitely did explain her title, obviously, in this book. And I don't think I marked it, so I should probably go back and mark that. Yeah, I didn't mark it, but it was in the last chapter, I believe. They talked about the whole Land of Silence thing. So, I'm going to have to actually go back at the end and remark that and so that I know. But, um, yeah, this was really good. I loved Eliana and Ethan. I hope I'm saying her name right. Eliana, because I don't think it would be Eliana. That sounds weird. So Eliana is what I'm saying. But Eliana and Ethan, their romance, oh, I loved. I loved their romance. So cute. Eliana is a very stubborn girl, but Ethan is very persistent. So I just love their romance. Rachel, Ethan's little girl, such a sweetie pie. Um, so much death. Like it just was like bam, 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 bam. The situation with Joseph, heartbreaking. Her father dying. Now that was insane to me. Um, Sarai, which was Ethan's wife, dying. It was just, it was so heart-wrenching. Um, V, because you guys know I don't know how to spell his name, but it's on the screen. I love him. He's hilarious to me. He just makes me so happy. Like, just him, Claudia, and Titus just make me so happy when they're in the, like, when they pop up, especially towards the end when they deal with Decimus. Um, I cannot stand Decimus. He pissed me off, especially at the end when he tried to come through. It was like, yeah, I love you, and I like you, and da 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 like, bruh. You put her through all that mess because you liked her? Come on now, bro. And you burned down her house? Come on. He pissed me off. Um, But I really did enjoy this. I will have a full-blown, like, non-spoilery review for this book coming really soon. I'm probably going to review her books in order of when I read them, most likely. Um, But yeah, Land of Silence was really good. I definitely recommend it. It's great. Um, The whole situation with her having the issue of blood for 12 years, I liked how Tessa um, created a really solid story around that. And um, just watching her, Eliana, year after year deal with that um, issue... Um, her encounter with Jesus was amazing. I loved all the scripture. Like, Tessa really went hard with the scriptures toward the end of the book, which I really loved. Again, I marked them, but I need to actually go back in and write the actual, like, verses where they come from. But, um, this was really, really good. Really, really good. Um, definitely recommend it. Love Tessa Apshaw. She is literally an auto-buy author for me. I'm buying Daughter of Rome. I'm buying 
her um ruth bible study when it comes out especially since it's by moody like i love moody publisher bible studies but still great great read and um i definitely would recommend it so i'll leave a link down below for you guys to check it out if you guys are interested in purchasing it um there's amazon kindle audible uh hardcover and paperback copies i think there are hardcover copies of this i'll leave all links down below um as well as to christianbook.com for this and maybe even barnes and nobles if i can find the link but uh great read loved it tessa has such a phenomenal way with just crafting a story around scripture and using actual um people from the scriptures and giving them a life that you can relate to and i think that's probably why i relate so much to um pearl in the sand um but yeah i have a video on that anyways so i'm just gonna end this reading vlog here i loved it so much the epilogue gave me life and um yeah sorry about that my family bought me some spanish food we have spanish food for the evening I'm gonna sit this on my bed real quick but um yeah loved it definitely recommend it and um i think that's it for now with this reading vlog it was very much shorter and different from how i do my other reading vlogs definitely have a new reading vlog coming soon which i'm super super excited because i'm also going to be doing a buddy read with this book so i'll talk about this buddy read um when i do my september reads and studies so yeah um <laughs> i'll see you guys in the next video thank you guys for watching uh thumbsing up this video commenting and all that great stuff and um i'll see you guys later bye mm -hmm.